Come on, fire, ladies. Oh, no, I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hale, before we move things about, you explain to Mr. Henderson exactly what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. By the way, has anything been moved? Are things just as you left them yesterday morning? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove. And you know, Frank, somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday, when I had to send Frank out to Mars Center for that man who went crazy. I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get back from Omaha by today. And as long as I went over there, Mr. Hale, Tell now just what happened when you came to the house yesterday morning. Well, Harry and I started town with a little potatoes and lunch. Excuse me, ladies. Please. Gee. Then Harry and I started town with a little potatoes and we came along the road from my place and uh, when I got here, I said, I'm going to see if I can't get that damn John Wright to go on with me on the party telephone. Uh, I mentioned it to him once before and he he put me off saying folks talk too much anyway, and all he wanted was peace and quiet. But I guess you know about how much he spoke himself. <laughs> but I figured if I came by the house and spoke about it before his wife, though I do recall telling Harry I wasn't sure. As Let's as talk as about that later, Mr. Hale. I do want to talk about that, but tell now just what happened when you came here yesterday. Now see, that's just the thing. That I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door and still it was all quiet inside. It was past 8 o'clock, so I knew they must be up. So I knocked again and I thought I heard somebody say, come in. Now I wasn't sure. Heck, I'm not sure yet. But I opened the door, opened this door here, and uh, there, in that rock that sat Miss Wright. What was she doing? Well, uh, she was rocking back and forth. But she had an apron in her hand. It was kind of bleeding in it. How did she look? Well, she looked queer, sir. How do you mean queer? As if she didn't know what she was going to do next and kind of done up. And how did she seem to feel about your coming? Well, I don't think she minded one way or another. But she didn't pay much attention. I said, how do this drive right? this cold, ain't it? She said, is it? And went on pleading that apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come up to the store, nor even to sit down. She just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And she starts to laugh. And I guess you called it a laugh. For I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said a little more sharply, but can I see him? And she says, no, real dumb like. Well, ain't he home? She says, yes, he's home. Then why can't I see him? I asked out of patience. And she stops, looks up at me, and says, because he's dead. You're dead, says I. She nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, just went on rocking back and forth. Why, where is he? And I asked her, not knowing what else to say. She uh, pointed upstairs, like that. Well, I started for the stairs with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to about here, but then I got it in me to ask. Why, what did he die of? She says, he died of a rope around his neck. Well, that unsettled me, so I went out and I called Harry. I thought I was going to need some help. And we came in, marched right on up there, and there he was alive. Shame to see a man like Let's that. Let's talk about that upstairs where you can point it all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. All right. Uh, my first thought was to get that rope off. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, when Harry stepped up to him and says, no, he's dead all right, and we better not touch a thing. So we came back downstairs, and she was still sitting that same way. Has anybody been notified, I asked her? She says, no. Uninterested, just continue pleading. Well, who did this, Miss Wright? Says Harry. He said it real business like. And she stops pleading, looks up. I don't know. You don't know, says Harry. She says, No, I don't. You were sleeping in the same bed, weren't you? And she says, Yes. But I sleep on the inside. 
Someone came and slipped a rope around his neck, strangled him, and you didn't wake up? She says, no, I didn't wake up. No hesitation right after him. Well, Mary's furious. And we must have looked as if we didn't know how that could be. After about a minute, she chimes in. I sleep Sam. Well, Harry's furious, and he wants to ask more questions. And I says, no, maybe we need to let her tell her story first to the coroner or to the chef. So Harry says he's going to run down, run down the old river's place where there's a telephone. And I told him, you don't move as fast as you can. What did Mrs. Wright, Wright do when she knew you'd gone for the coroner? Well, she moved from that rocket there to uh, this chair about here, sat there with her hands held together and looking down. So I thought I ought to make conversation, and I says, well, I came by to see if John wants to put in the telephone. And then at that, she starts to laugh again. And then stops. And looks at me, scared. Well, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't scared I would like to say it was. And then soon later, Harry came back. And Dr. Lloyd. And then himself. And I met Mr. Peters, the sheriff. Heck, <laughs> now I think about it, that's all I know that you know. Well, I guess we'll go upstairs first and then out to the barn around there. Now, you're certain there's nothing else important here, nothing will point to any kind of motive? Nothing here but kitchen bangs. Ah! This is a nice mess! Oh, my gracious! They did it free! She worked about the only trace of coal she was afraid of. Well, before we're through, I think she'll have something a little more important than preserves to worry about. Well, you know, she's used to worry about the trifles. Oh, yeah. And yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Ugh! Filthy towels! Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. Well, to be sure, but I know of some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such disgustingly filthy towels. Those towels get dirty off quick. Men's hands ain't always as clean as they could be. They're part of me. Loyal to your sex, I see. <laughs> you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too? I haven't seen much of her in late years. I haven't even been in this house in more than a year. And why is that? You didn't like her? I liked her all well enough. Farmer's wives have their hands full, Mr. Henderson. Pay my food. <laughs> and then... Yes? It just never seemed a very cheerful place. No, it's not very cheerful. I wouldn't say he had the homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know if John Wright had either. You mean they didn't get along? No, I don't mean anything. But I don't think a place to be any cheerfuler for John Wright being in it. Well, I guess we'll talk about that a little later. For now, I want to get the lay of things upstairs. Okay. I suppose anything Mrs. Peter does would be all right. She was taking some clothes for her, you know, and a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I'd like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters. Be sure to keep an eye out for anything that may be of use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. I hate to have men coming into my kitchen snooping around and criticizing. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Duty's all right, but I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make that fire could have got a little bit of this on. Wish I thought of that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her, but not having things slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. She had great set. She was gonna put this in there. Shame about a fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. I think there's some here that's all right, Mrs. Spears. <laughs> yeah, it's here. And it's cherries, too. I declare, I think that's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all her hard work in the hot weather. I remember the afternoon when I put my cherries up last summer. <laughs> Well, I must get those clothes out of the front room closet. 
You all coming with me, right, Mrs. Hale? You can help me carry them. Paper in the 
Right. In that cupboard, maybe. <gasps> Mrs. Hale. Here's a bird cage. Did she have a bird? What? I don't know whether she did or not. I haven't been here in so long. There was a man around selling canaries cheap last year. But I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did, I mean, she used to sing real pretty herself. <laughs> it seems awful strange to have a bird in a place like this. She must have had one a while, so would the cage be here? Maybe that old cat got No, she didn't have a cat. She's got that thing people have about cats being afraid of them. My cat got into her room once. She got real upset and made me take it out. My sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? Well, look at Mrs. Hale. Look at this hinge on the door. It's broken. Looks like someone must have been rough with it. Why, yes. I wish if they were finding the evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. I am awful glad you did come with me, Mrs. Hale. Be awful lonesome here, me all by myself. It would, wouldn't it? But I'll tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I had come over once in a while when she was here. I wish I had. You awful busy, Mrs. Hale. With your house and your children? No. I could have come. I only stayed away because they weren't cheerful, and, and that's why I ought to have come. Never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in the hollow. You don't even see the road. I don't know what it is, but this is a lonesome place, and it always was. Wish I had come over to see Minnie sometimes. I could just Mrs. see Mrs. we mustn't oh. reproach it. Sometimes we just don't know how it is with other folks until something turns up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house. John right out to work all day, and no company when he did come in. Did you know John Ryan's Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. <laughs> yes, good. He didn't drink. He paid his debts. And he kept his word as well as most, I guess. He was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. I mean, just to pass the time of day with him. Like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a bird. What do you suppose went with it? I don't know. Unless it got sick and died. You weren't raised around here, were you? You didn't know her. No, not to know her. Not till they brought her in the other day. She was kind of like a bird herself. Real sweet and pretty. But kind of timid and fluttery. <laughs> How she did change. Tell you what, why don't you take the quilt in with you? It might take up her mind a little bit. But I think that might be a good idea. <laughs> there couldn't be any objection to it, could there? No. <laughs> now what exactly could I bring? I mean, her patches are here and her things. Oh, there's some red. Yes, I see. I suppose it's got some sewing things in it. <laughs> Maybe her scissors are in here. something somebody might give to you. Oh, yes it does. What? Well, there's something wrapped in this piece of silk. Why, this isn't her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it's, it's the bird. But look at it. Look at its neck. Somebody oh, run it sick. <laughs> well, ladies, have you decided whether she's going to quilt it? Or not, it's She was going to not it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Hmm. Is the bird flown? Oh, we think the cat got it. Is there a cat? No, they're superstitious. They leave. Hmm. Well, no sign of anybody having come from the outside, their own rope. Let's go back up and go over things piece by piece. It would have to have been somebody who knew just the way out of the place. She liked that bird. She was going to bear it in this pretty box. When I was a little girl, I had a cat, and there was this boy. 
and he took a hatchet and right before my very eyes, I, if they wouldn't have held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would have seemed never to have had any children around. No, John White wouldn't like a bird. A thing that I say, she used to say. He killed that too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Bright. It was an awful thing that happened in this house that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept. Slipping a rope around his neck that choked the life out of him. His neck choked the life out of him. We don't know who killed the bird. We don't know. If there had been years in here of nothing, and then a bird to sing to you, it would be awful still. After the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota and my first baby died, I was only two years old. And me with no other then. How soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for the evidence? I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish she would have seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with blue ribbon and stood up there in the choir and sang. I wish I had come over once in a while. That was the crime. That was the crime. Who's gonna punish that? We mustn't take on. I didn't know she needed help. I know how things could be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together, and then we live far apart. We all go through the same thing. It's just a different kind of the same thing. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her her fruit was gone. Tell her it ain't. Take this in to prove it to her. She may never know whether it was broken or not. Well, if the men can see us now, wouldn't they just laugh? Getting all fluttery over a little thing like a dead canary. As if that had anything to do with, well, with, but wouldn't they just laugh? Maybe they would. Maybe they wouldn't. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear except for a reason for doing it, but you can have juries when it comes to women. Now, if there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, Thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing it. Hey, I know I got the team all around outside. Uh -huh. It's cold out there. I'm going to stay here a while by myself. I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied you can't do better. Do you want to see what Miss Peters is going to take in? <laughs> no. I don't suppose they're very dangerous things the ladies have taken. No, Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervision. For that matter, the sheriff's wife is married to the law. <laughs> you ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. <laughs> married to the law. I just want you to come here a minute, George. We ought to take a look at these windows. Oh, windows. So there's windows? We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Oh, come on, man. Oh, Mrs. Hale, I can't believe it. We found out she wasn't going to quilt it. She was going to, what is it she called it again, ladies? We call it nine. <laughs> <laughs> nine. <laughs>